I would like to explain uh, one of my research projects I was engaged in uh, before I joined CAOS. So you probably see some of the technical details and some of the you know, hands-on things. Um, you know, that's mainly because I was a poster when I was engaged in this project. So I hope you, know, you have a sense of what you would do if you are students in the you know, robotics program or you know, what robotics students and postdocs researchers they are doing in general in their research project. So in this presentation, uh, we are going to discuss uh, some of you know, interesting topics with building and doing some experiments with uh, fleet of autonomous robotic vessels. So this project, we started with uh, thinking about how we can use the robots to as a you know, new way to provide the smart infrastructure to the cities, or it, it can be also used as a new means of the transportation. So in this project, you are, we are imagining you know, building a surface vessels that can transport the people and also you know, deliver parcels. And one of the interesting um, use cases we uh, designed was using these systems as like a smart dumpster system. So if our system is fully autonomous, it can be used to you know, attach to uh, flooring dumpsters. And then this system will bring the flooring dumpster to a certain locations where people uh, or the residents of the city still can dump their uh, you know, waste into the dumpsters. And then these dumpsters, when they are full, our autonomous systems can you know, go back and then take it back to the incinerator. So these kind of uh, you know, interesting use cases are you know, something we are trying to develop through the research program in this project. And the right two figures, uh, those are uh, some of the earlier prototypes. So I will show you in the next few slides how these earlier prototypes turns into really interesting, very nice uh, you know, kind of final product. But uh, this is a really earlier prototype. And we, I and my colleagues and friends, we spent a lot of hours and hours in the lab and then you know, experiment, doing experiment um, in the different places around the world. So we, I really had a fun time with my colleagues. So I want to um, thank you for my colleagues who helped me with you know, having this amazing experience. So I would like to start my presentations um, playing this YouTube video. So this video kind of shows how our robot project turned into, you know, very nice, interesting product. So essentially this system, this autonomous system uh, has sensors. So the sensor allows to a robot to find its locations in this uh, waterway of the city. And it can also scan the area. So we have a 3D laser scanner and then using the scanner data, the, the computer on board, it can do like perceptions uh, and the object detections and those kinds of information eventually used for finding the safest way to get to destinations or try to avoid a collision with other vessels most likely operated by a human captains. And uh, when it comes to a uh, propulsion system, it has a pretty, you know, well, well equipped uh, with a, you know, omnidirectional uh, propeller. So you can go back and forth sideways. And this is one of demonstration for docking, uh, loading uh, passengers. And we are also imagining, you know, building full scale system for removing the waste from city and delivering parcels. And these systems are actually modular. It has a modular design. So you can put these things together and build like a floating structure on the city's waterway as well. So before I begin my presentation, I would like to uh, thank you and acknowledge the mentors and my colleagues and my friends who we worked really hard in this project. So I want to uh, thank you again for them. All right, so uh, our journey started with, with the building this very first prototype. So the very first prototype is a much smaller than what you have seen on the YouTube video. And essentially this prototype had uh, four propellers. So two on the sides, um, two, uh, one on front and back, uh, one, the other one on the back. 
And other than the propeller system, um, this is this uh, prototype also had uh, like a GPS. We don't show the GPS in the figure, but it has a GPS and also a laser scanner. So you can you know, scan the area and do some perception tasks. And inside the uh, prototype, we put the IMU, inertial measurement unit, along with a computation unit. So the computer essentially you know, process all the sensor data, do sensor fusion, and create a control signal to the propellers. So uh, the one I have shown is a one to four scale, scale prototype. It's a very early version. And then we move on to the one to two scale prototype. And the one you show on the um, YouTube video is a full scale. So unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to work with a full scale, but I heard from my colleagues that it was just amazing uh, system. And my research focused more on the navigation part, you know, designing um, control system and do trajectory planning in order uh, for this system to move from A location to the B location. But uh, some of other research, interesting research topic within the project was the dealing with the sensor data. You know, as you can see from the figure, once you collect the laser scanner data, we could um, do object detection, object recognition from the laser scanner data. And also you had a camera system on board. So you can also uh, use a deep learning method in order to uh, identify other vessels uh, while it's navigating along the uh, city's waterways. So the way it works in the navigation part is essentially we give our system a reference trajectory. Here the dotted curve is a reference trajectory. And we design a control system in a way that this control system generates the control signal to the propellers so that the vessel can follow this reference trajectory. So let's call um, this system as a trajectory tracking system. So in the next few slides, we are going to uh, talk about the, how we built the trajectory tracking system for our autonomous surface vessel. So one of my uh, research aim was to build a system and use a system that can autonomously turn into a floating structure. So imagine if our system has a sensors and navigation capability, you can easily imagine they can be, you know, come together from far away locations and try to attach to each other and build this floating structure. So it has a very nice application to you know, build a platform where people can uh, meet with each other and it can be turned into like a floating market on the city's waterway as well. And the other application I already introduced before, but it's a waste collection. So this autonomous system, it can be extended to have like autonomous vessel part and the dumpster part. And once they are put together, it can you know, navigate um, as a single unit along the canal. And if we want to put the dumpster as a location, we can use a navigation uh, trajectory tracking system in order to locate the dumpsters in a location where you know, people want to uh, throw away the, their waste. So some of the challenges in this research project was in threefold. One is actually building a system. So this system has to be modular in order to you know, connect together and build like a flooring structure. So there is a challenges in building a reconfigure of a multi-vessel system. And the other part is um, designing a control system. And the last one I'm going to um, describe is the trajectory planning. So if you remember the video I showed you, we are giving this vessel a reference trajectory and using the control system, we could allow um, our vessels to follow the reference trajectory. So both are important research topics along with actual system design. So I'm going to describe uh, one of them in, a, in this order. So when it comes to a prototyping, we really had interesting people in the research team and the, some of the, you know, the team member has really professional skills in building uh, prototypes. So we had really good relationship collaboration and my colleagues was more on to like a designing, designing the shape of the boat and doing 3D printing work. And our, my, my contribution there was actually, you know, attaching the actuators, the propellers, putting sensors and, you know, connecting to um, computer computational unit and trying to develop an algorithm inside the 
uh, computation unit to process the sample, uh, the sensor data and generate the control signal to the propellers. So here are uh, some of the examples um, I want to uh, share in this presentation. So this, again, these vessels are modular, so they can be you know, connected together. So in this figure, I'm using the, just a regular magnetic uh, latching system. So they're just mag the strong, very strong magnets. So that allows the vessel to connect to one another. And you probably noticed it, but uh, we are putting sensors, the indoor GPS, we are doing an experiment indoor. We are putting GPS system only to the one vessel and the other vessels, doesn't have a sensor, they don't have a computation unit. So essentially the one with the one with the sensors, we consider them as a smart vessel so they can do like uh, autonomous navigation, but the other vessels, they cannot do the navigation by themselves. But we are thinking about putting smart vessels along with um, say non-smart vessels and they can move as a single unit. So that's kind of a challenge I was uh, trying to uh, tackle through the research project. So I'll show you some of the uh, interesting uh, videos on the experiment that we had back in um, 2019. So here, what we are trying to test is design control system and give um, the control system the circular reference trajectory. And what we are trying to do is, you know, measure the performance of the control system using different configuration of the multiple vessels. So we have just seen the side to by side uh, two vessel connections, and this is the front and back two vessel connection. So again, notice that the only one vessel has the GPS system and the other does not. And they are kind of modular, so you can actually detach easily and then put together. And uh, the control system allows when they are attached together, they can navigate along the given reference trajectory. So this is uh, one of our favorite uh, L-shaped configuration. So how, how does the trajectory tracking happens? So once we are given trajectory, let's call it reference trajectory, we want to design a control system. And what control system does is it generates the control signal to the propellers. And once the propeller gets the control signal, it generates a force and it moves the vessels along the reference trajectory and it gets to the destination. So some of the challenges here is, as we increase the number of vessels connected, for instance, in this figure, we have a three vessels connected in L shape. We already have a 12 propellers. So in our system design, we don't have any restrictions on the number of vessels connected to get to, together, but we still have to think about how we are going to control all the propellers um, in this, connected a unit uh, platform. So there is a challenges on controlling the you know, multiple propellers. Um, and then the other part is because we are thinking about using this system in the uh, city's waterways where there might be um, you know, disturbances coming from uh, immediate environments, such as if there's other vessels passing by, it will generate the corn and will probably push our autonomous vessel away from the reference trajectory. So, all those kinds of uncertainties and disturbances are coming from the environment. We want to make sure that even with a disturbance, we want to make sure that our vessel follows the reference trajectory uh, with a certain level of a performance guarantee. So the way uh, we designed the feedback control system, we started with looking at how we can, you know, build a mathematical model that describes how the uh, position and the heading angle and the moving velocity of the vessel changes in response to control input. So here control input, you can think of as uh, the force this propeller generates. So once we have a mathematical model from control signal to the pose and velocity of the vessels, we can design a um, feedback control block here. So the feedback control block I will briefly describe in the next few slides, will take in the reference trajectory from the trajectory planning part and try to generate the propeller signal and propeller control signal in a way that the entire vessel um, tracks the refer given reference trajectory. So there is other important modules such as a parameter estimation, but uh, I'm not going to uh, go into any of the details on this part, but I'll focus on 
uh, the control signal design, the control system design, along with uh, some of the work uh, in the trajectory planning. So as I mentioned, we have we first to have to build a mathematical model that describes how the vessel's uh, position, orientation, and velocity changes in response to the uh, force generated by the propellers. But this mathematical model describes that relationship. And if you look at the mathematical model, one thing you have to um, compute through the experiment is the parameter of this model. So in this mathematical expression, this A's, this A's, and these A's, and then the B's in front of the force term. So these are the parameter we have to estimate, we have to compute um, from the data we collected through the experiment. And then once we build this mathematical model, we could start thinking about designing a feedback control. So what are the challenges here? So these parameters, A's and B's, they actually depends on how many vessels are connected and the way they are connected. So depending on you know, configuration, the connection configuration of the multiple vessels, we have to go through um, the different experiments and collect the data and try to uh, compute this amount of parameters in order to get very accurate a dynamic model. So if you imagine you know, having one vessel configuration in the, in the lab environment test, if it takes, for instance, two hours and just using the three vessel platform, there are 10 different configuration, as you can see on the slide, it will take a 20 hours in order to have a you know, very accurate model of uh, this multi, multiple uh, connected vessel platform. So instead of um, trying to do extensive experiments uh, in order to get a very accurate model, our approach was, let's look at, you know, if we can approximate the vessel's configuration into single vessel configuration, so it will only depend on number of vessels connected, um, but not on the configuration itself, just the number of vessels and approximate as a single vessel and try to build a single vessel um, model and then use it as approximate uh, dynamic model that describes how the vessel moves in response to the propeller uh, force. So nice thing about the, this um, approximation is not only finding the parameter, this now the parameter selection, estimation, computation, it will not depend on the number of vessels used, but you can simply set n equals one single vessel and do experiment and compute the parameters using the data from the single vessel experiment. And then when it comes to using the model to the multiple vessel, we could simply change these n numbers and parameter to you know, make it equal to the number of vessels we use. For instance, in this figure, if we have a three vessels, we simply set the n equals to three. Of course, so this is really a rough approximations. And if you do actually testing and make a comparison with accurate model, there is some error. And then this error uh, appears in this D terms in this mathematical model. So you can think about, so we have a proxy model. We have to design a um, feedback system. We have to, we can think about you know, problems like I have a error in the model, how we could minimize of effect of error on the system performance. So that's uh, you know, one of the research topic um, I have looked at in, during my participation in the project. And that's something I'm going to briefly describe um, some of the key points there. But uh, if you want to learn more about um, you know, this approach using the approximate model and designing a control system that is robust with respect to this modeling error, I would encourage you to uh, take a look at the, one of my papers that was uh, published in the leading uh, robotics conference. So here, when it comes to the feedback control uh, design problem, we were assuming that we are given a reference trajectory. So we know how the vessel have to move from A location to the B location. And here, the goal would be to design a feedback control system, right? So we are given, you know, things like a location, heading angle, and the velocity of the vessel through the sensing sensors uh, on board. And we are also given reference trajectory. Now, the problem is how we can design this control block 
that would take in the sensor data and create the control signal to the propellers. So I'll give you a really high level description of the approach we have taken. So we are relying on this very uh, interesting technique called the model matching from robust control uh, design methodology. So here, the, the most important idea is we start with the building another mathematical model. So different from the vessel model. So we are building another mathematical model that describes how the reference trajectory changes over time. Okay. So once we build this mathematical model, we could actually design a feedback control system in a way that if the control system is applied to our vessels, of robotic vessels, and this feedback interconnection with a vessel with a control system looks very similar to the mathematical model of the reference system. Okay, so uh, we are actually matching the uh, mathematical model for the vessels and mathematical model for the reference. So you can imagine once you match two different mathematical models, our vessel with a designed control um, system would follow the given reference trajectory. So that's kind of a you know, key idea behind um, my research in the past. And the other uh, important part is we can also you know, look at the key parameters of the feedback control system. So for instance, if I pick um, you know, key parameter for regulating the position and regulating the velocity, and you can also you know, look at the technical conditions under which the system guarantees the trajectory tracking performance. So this is the one of the uh, key results I have uh, published in one of my conference papers. And also these technical conditions uh, can be used to tune the system performance. Um, and then we can look at you know, trade-off between how much battery we use in order to increase the performance of the trajectory tracking uh, versus minimizing the effect of the disturbance or the modeling error that appears in the approximate the model on the trajectory tracking performance. So this result essentially gives how we can tune the parameter for the feedback control system in a way that one way we could use more energy to you know, increase the performance of, of our uh, trajectory tracking. But on the other side, we could preserve more energy but allow vessels to deviate more from the reference trajectory. So this is a very nice way to tune the parameter uh, for the uh, feedback control system. So now let's look at some of the prototypes and our implementations of the control um, algorithm. And let's look at some, I will show you some of the videos we have taken uh, during the experiments. So in this uh, setting, we are going to consider the three uh, vessel configuration in the L shape. So we have one coordinator. So coordinator has the uh, indoor GPS, it, so it knows where it is. And it also has IMU sensors, so it can estimate the heading angle. Um, and it has a computational unit to uh, implement the control system I have described in the previous slides. And uh, the other two vessels, we call it the follower vessels. They only have small microcontroller that allows um, these followers by themselves can control the propellers, but the followers themselves, they don't know where they are unless they are connected to the coordinator um, and they cannot implement any sophisticated control algorithm there. Okay, so uh, I described as, you know, there is a very fine a way to tune the parameter for the control system to one side, you can increase the performance in the trajectory tracking, the other side, you could, you know, minimize, uh, but, and we can also minimize the expect of the external disturbance. So this is kind of experimental result that shows our control system is really resilient to uh, the external force. So actually this is me in back in old days doing experiment in the swimming pool. So here I'm using kind of metal pole um, to push the, this L-shaped vessels. All right, so we also did a other interesting um, experiment. So in the second experiment, we are, this vessel is a giving given a circular trajectory. So it's going to circle around this swimming pool. And again, by same method, same tool, I'm going to push the, um, this L-shaped multi vessels while it's moving along the, the circular trajectory. So here, what we wanted to uh, test is we want to see if our uh, control system is resilient to the force 
apply from an uh, outside uh, um, environment. All right, so, uh, so far we have looked at um, some of the work on the control system design. So now let's look at uh, the trajectory planning part. So with the trajectory planning part, along with the control uh, system design, what I'm going to describe is changing the way the multiple vessels are connected. So we call it actually shape shifting of the multiple vessels. So you can imagine they are changing the way they are shaped from one shape to the other, or one connection configuration to the other configuration. So here, the key part you're going to utilize the control system is already designed and have a, a trajectory planner to give a reference trajectory in a way that we change the uh, configuration of these two vessels from side to side connection to the back and forth connection. So here, the key part would be generate the reference uh, trajectory for the uh, vessels with um, the sensors, the smart vessel, to take in the reference trajectory and use the control system to and follow the reference trajectory in order to go from you know left hand side of the, the, the this vessel to the front of it. Okay, so this is the main idea how we can do shape shifting of the multiple vessels. So uh, this this work has a really nice implications on you know, building a flooring structure on the uh, city's waterway. So if we imagine we have like a group of these robotic vessels and some has a sensors, we call these smart vessels or uh, coordinator vessels and some other they don't, they are just floating um, platform but may have a propellers underneath. So uh, the main idea here is imagine, you know, these systems, these platforms are essentially far away from the location where we want to build a floating structure. And once there is a, you know, demand from customers or, you know, the residents of the city, this system travels from far away all the way to the location, this location, and then they start, you know, autonomously reconfiguring their connection configuration and try to uh, put together in a way that uh, uh, that is a desired in this uh, specific application. So, in the next few slides, I want to you know discuss uh, how we actually designed uh, this reference trajectory, uh, the trajectory planning uh, for the shape shifting. So, just like uh, many of other uh, trajectory planning approach, we uh, adopted the optimization approach. That is optimization has two important components. One is called the cost function. So this cost function essentially, um, you know, serves as a metric uh, for the, the uh, uh, trajectory plan. So for instance, in, in our work, we wanted to uh, make the trajectory, reference trajectory as smooth as possible. So we actually designed the uh, cost function for the optimization in a way that it actually penalized the change of the velocity. And the other important components is we want to make sure that the vessel or our, the reference trajectory starts from the current location of the vessels to the desired destination so that you know, the shape shifting could happen in these uh, figures. So we set the constraint for the optimization um, involving the initial location at the starting point of the reference trajectory and the final location on the reference trajectory. And this is the most important part in this research, collision avoidance constraint. So you can imagine if the vessel is, you know, just, just going straight to the destination, you might imagine the moving vessel would collide with the, the other one that is stationary. So we don't want to, we don't want that to happen. So we add a constraint in a way that along the reference trajectory, the moving vessel never collide with stationary ones or other structures in the canal environment. So we put the constraint in order to guarantee that in the optimization. And one of the interesting and one of the technical uh, difficulty here is this constraint is in the technical term, it's called a non-convex constraint. So what it means is that in, 
or more importantly, implication of having non-convex constraint in the optimization is it makes a problem very, very difficult to solve. And if we, we are using uh, computers to, to find a solution to the optimization, having non-convex constraint makes computations time very, very long. So we don't want to have a you know, non-convex constraint, uh, but unfortunately in this, research in this you know, scenario, we can, cannot avoid not having the non-convex constraint. So I and my, uh, our team look at the problem and then try to see if we can you know, deviate the difficulty of uh, having the non-convex term. So we developed a way to split the non-convex, the optimization problem with a non-convex constraint into a number of optimization with convex constraint. So we can imagine optimization with the convex um, problem is much easier to solve than the one with a non-convex problem. So we kind of find a, a way to do that. We split the non-convex problem into number of convex problems and adopted uh, what we call the integer, a uh, mixed integer programming in order to solve this number of non-convex uh, problems that's much easier than solving the original problem directly. So uh, some of our work, uh, which we published in um, this conference, which describes how we can do, you know, rewriting this problem into multiple computationally simply solve the problems and apply the, some of the optimization tools uh, from, uh, from the, you know, the optimization research community to get uh, the reference trajectory for our shape shifting research. So I will not go in detail on how we did an actual implementation, but I want to encourage um, audiences if you are interested in learning more of the details, I would uh, encourage you to take a look at uh, this paper. So let's look at uh, some of the interesting uh, experiment with this, uh, we did with this uh, shape shifting research. So here, what I'm going to show you is three vessels, they are going to do shape-shifting. So there was a one with a GPS system there, going, it's going to move around the other ones and try to change their um, connection configuration. So a slightly different setting we adopted here is we switch the uh, latching part. So in order for this system to, or vessels to latch and unlatch, in order to do this uh, shape-shifting, we change the magnetic latching to the electromagnetic matching. So this allows vessels to you know, you know, ch change the way they are connected. And also we have RFID sensors and these sensors allows uh, this, the um, smart vessels to figure out how the vessels are uh, connected with each other. Okay. So in the, this experiment, this smart vessels, the vessel with a GPS system, will you know, move around this uh, swimming pool. So you cannot see the reference trajectory it generates, but you can imagine um, the, uh, the trajectory planning work we have did in our research project would determine how these autonomous vessels or autonomous vessels with other non-autonomous vessels connected together should move around um, this swimming pool in order to change their uh, connection configuration. So this is a kind of my favorite one. So we, this the three vessels start with the side to by side uh, configurations. And then the autonomous vessels go around the you know, other non-autonomous vessels and one more time, and it will build the configuration of like a back and forth. And then it will navigate to the middle of a swimming pool um, and turn a 90 degree and goes back to other docking point. And they're going to reverse the, um, the shape shifting going from front to back configuration to side by side configuration. So, so far we have seen, you know, multi-vessel shape shifting, control system design and charity planning uh, work. Um, but the, what I want to uh, briefly describe for the next um, 10 or 15 minutes is canal navigation. So 
Remember in the beginning of my presentation, I described our autonomous vessels can be used not only for building a foreign structure or to use as a you know, waste collection system. It can also navigate in the canal environment and transport people and parcels. So if you imagine using this system and if you had a chance to, for instance, to go to um, Amsterdam Canal, then you might see other vessels, not autonomous, but the ones that is operated by human captains. So if we are operating our system in actual canal system, we really have to think about um, navigating and understanding what other human vessels would navigate in, in the same environment. Or from different perspective, if I were captain of a, one vessel, if I see autonomous vessel approaching, I want to make sure that this autonomous vessel is not doing anything uh, crazy. So we want to make sure that our system, our autonomous vessel um, can do some, some type of a social decision making and it can, um, can respect what uh, other human uh, captains um, consider as you know, socially safe navigation method. So in order to tackle uh, some of the challenges in the um, canal navigation with autonomous system, we look at uh, another trajectory planning uh, research. So it's a slightly different than what I've described for the shape shifting, but here we are really looking at how we can um, you know, generate the reference trajectory for the autonomous vessel to navigate from A location to B location. But we want to make sure that this reference trajectory look like uh, the ones probably human captains would decide to navigate. So here we want to um, develop a methodology looking at the, for instance, the data set of the human operated vessels and try to learn the statistics underlying the data set and try to uh, develop a, a trajectory planning algorithm that allows our vessels, our autonomous vessels navigate just like a human operated vessels. So here the objective again is to you know, build a trajectory training, uh, planning algorithm. And one objective here is uh, we want to make sure that our autonomous vessels experience less vessels to vessel encounter. So for instance, if our vessel is going uh, left-hand side of the canal and the human captains are approaching from the opposite direction, that would not be a desired um, you know, happening that would happen to both, okay, both the vessels. And the other part, we want to achieve is our trajectory planning um, algorithm allows our autonomous vessels to exhibit more predictable motion from human captain's perspective. So I'll get to this point and give you a little bit more details on what I meant by uh, predictive, uh, predictable motion of the autonomous vessel. So fortunately, uh, when it comes to um, autonomous surface vessel research, there is a very uh, nice data set that's already available in, in the public. So uh, most of the big uh, vessels that is operating in the you know, city's waterway or even far away ocean, they have to register their identification along with uh, their um, trajectory data, such as the GPS data points to the system called the automatic identification system. So once they register uh, this system, it would be uh, shared with uh, you know, other entities, other uh, vessels in, for, for the safety purpose. So we had a chance to look at this data set and try to understand how a human captains are actually controlling their vessels. So for instance, if you look at these uh, figures on the slide, you know, vessels are slightly moving to the right-hand side, uh, but the, you know, it really depends on, the, for instance, the width of the, uh, each canal segment. So our research here was trying to, you know, look at the data set and try to understand what's the statistical model underlying the data set. So once we build our statistical model, we think about how we can turn the model into a optimization problem as we did for the uh, shape shifting. So we take in the model and build the optimizations and try to uh, develop a trajectory, of, a trajectory planning algorithm out of the optimization. So uh, as you can see from the first step, data processing all the way to the optimization. So in this part, uh, framework, we are trying to learn um, the, the navigation behavior of the human vessels, so the data set, 
and try to do the planning for the autonomous vessel. So you can think of this as a very uh, interesting learning-based trajectory planning approach for the robotics research. So how, how do, does it happen? So we started with looking at another optimization formulation. So I will not go in detail, but I want to highlight the important part. So the, here, the most important part is this R function. So how would you determine the metric for the trajectory uh, plan? So once we know what R is, what desired R is, then we can try to solve the problem and we can um, get a, the reference trajectory out of the optimization. So here, the big challenge now is how we are going to design R. So we've looked at the different approaches and this approach called uh, inverse reinforcement learning. This, uh, this concept allows us to compute R function, the metric we use to find the best reference trajectory using the data set that is collected from AI system. So again, the, this data set contains the trajectories of the human operated vessel. So if we are correctly using this methodology, the end result would be finding the reference trajectory that looks more like uh, you know, trajectories of the human operated vessels. And if our autonomous vessel would use those trajectories for the navigation, then we can easily imagine our vessels, you know, moves like a human operated vessels. So there is a very nice underlying theory that backs up our approach. It's called a principle of maximum entropy. So I don't want to go into the details, but I want to um, make a small remark on where you can find the references. And uh, the way we construct the reward function or the cost function for the trajectory planning is that we take uh, some of the important terms from this principle of maximum entropy and build our own cost function. So what we are trying to do here in the trajectory planning is we want to penalize the travel time. So make sure that the vessel does not you know, spend too much time to get to the destination. But at the same time, we want to make sure that um, vessel is navigating just like a human operated vessel. So this is second component of this optimization actually penalizes the autonomous vessel if it's trying to do something different from um, the, the behavior of the human operated vessels we learned from the trajectory data set. And by the way, we call um, our approach uh, social trajectory planning. And uh, building a statistical method, in case you are interested, we use the kernel density estimation that goes, uh, turns the uh, trajectory data into a statistical model. And the statistical model was used in um, the uh, trajectory planning optimization. Okay, so uh, uh, what I want to do in the next few slides is to show the performance of our social trajectory planning. So uh, one of the thing I want to do is make a comparison with this very, very nice work that was stamped from um, the AI and machine learning research community. So this approach is called the maximum entropy inverse reinforcement learning. It sounds very um, interesting, right? And uh, this approach uses a very similar approach uh, as ours, except that they use a slightly different structure, the way the reward function or cost function was built in this optimization. So, uh, Let's take in as you know this existing approach uses a slightly different structure for building the optimization than ours, but it used a very similar approach of using the principle of maximum entropy and thinking about how we could design the reward function um, from the data set using the uh, inverse reinforcement learning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the performance of three different approaches. The first approach is called the minimum travel time trajectory planning. So this uh, approach finds a trajectory that allows the vessels to get to destination uh, as fast as possible. So you will see uh, this is kind of a shortest path from uh, origin to destination. And the existing method I just introduced, the maximum entropy IRL and our social trajectory planning. So if you actually compute uh, trajectory um, between the two points in the canal, they kind of finds a slightly different patterns of the trajectory. So in order to see the performance, so what we are going to consider is uh, you know, safety in the canal navigation. So we are going to count uh, the frequency of head-on encounters. The head-on encounters is defined as two vessels 
you know, meet, meeting each other at the relative degree of 30 or within within a relative degree of the 30. So this simulation um, will show how the frequency of the head-on encounters um, would happen between the vessels that is navigating along three different approaches. So here, uh, the darker the red uh, means there is more frequent head-on encounters of so the vessels would, you know, meet each other head to head more often if the color is darker and the lighter means it's less frequent. So if you see the end result, for instance, in this particular canal segments, uh, mean travel time approach achieves the uh, largest or the most frequent head on encounters compared to, to other approaches. I'll show you another one uh, for a different canal segments. So you will see, uh, interestingly, um, <clears throat> compared to even minimum travel time approach, this existing method would um, incur more head-on encounter frequent between the vessels traveling along the trajectories it finds. And I guess that this is the most interesting I want to highlight is that this, our social trajectory planning approach incurs the most less um, frequency of the head-on encounters among the vessels traveling uh, along the trajectories that our method finds. So to summarize this, this is the graph that summarizes the performance of our, of our approach compared to uh, minimum travel time. Other than going to going along the you know, fastest way to get to destination, if, if the vessel, our autonomous vessel is using our approach that would actually increase, um, increase on the performance. And then that what it means is that it will allow the autonomous vessel to meet other vessels in the relative reheading angle you know, of uh, 30 less frequent than other methods. So predictability is another important issue uh, in the robotics research. So predictability, what it meant by is if we are given the destination of our robot, how well can we estimate the trajectory of the robot? So we can think of that as a definition of the predictability of robot motion. So what I'm going to show you in the next few slides is given the data from the, the AIS data set, the human trajectory uh, data set, we are going to compare the trajectories determined by the three different approaches. So here we are seeing three different data uh, trajectory data of the human operated vessels. And let's to see how the three different approaches predicts the, um, the trajectory of the human operated vessels which one works the best. So the blue is actually ours. So it's the social trajectory planning in most three cases looks more similar to the, the gray line, the human vessel data compared to the red, the mean travel time trajectory and the green, the existing approach for the um, trajectory planning. And let's look at uh, some other examples as well. So here we are looking at the uh, human vessel data on the different canal segments. Um, and the blue again is the one um, that is computed by our approach. So as you can see, uh, the you know, social trajectory plane, the one we have proposed uh, for you know, safe navigation of the autonomous vessels works better than other approaches. Of course, I don't want to make a you know, false argument that is that if, if the autonomous vessel is navigating along our approach, then we can guarantee you know, 100% safety. I don't want to argue that, but uh, you know, through the research, we could kind of think about uh, integrating uh, data sets and try to build a uh, you know, navigation system that would increase the safety of uh, canal navigation of the, um, the autonomous surface vessels. So here is a brief uh, summary of um, the performance uh, in, in the context of the predictability of the robot motion. So as you can see, blue ones, our approach actually makes an improvement over both the minimum travel time approach and also compared to the existing ones. So uh, this is all I have for my presentation. And I would 
like to conclude my presentation with uh, some of the opportunities you might find if you are interested in coming to KAUST. So my research group is looking at how, you know, building a uh, underwater, uh, underwater uh, autonomous robotic systems. And these robotic systems are meant to be used to collect the data and monitor the coral reef, the most important um, ecosystem underwater. So some of the earlier work uh, tackled to some of the you know, localization navigation problem in, in the very um, this small water tank in our robotics lab. And also uh, some of the other uh, research activities we are looking at is how we could make the uh, decision-making algorithm for the individual robots, for them to be more like a social so they can interact with each other in the you know, multi-robot navigation problem. Also, they can do some type of a co coordination, collaborations in um, manipulation tasks as well. So here, some, these are the, some of the very, very old, earlier work um, that allows, this al algorithm allows uh, for this multi-robots to do like, collision-free navigations and coordinations in scanning and the picking up like, a small object from this lab space. And I also would like to acknowledge and thank uh, my postdoc and um, students who are working very hard in the lab. I really want to thank their hard working and making contribution to this very interesting robotics research project. All right, this is all I have for today. And thank you so much for your attention. And I'm also always looking for a talented and hardworking students. So if you feel like you are interested in any of the projects I've described, uh, please feel free to uh, send me an email. I would like to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for this wonderful talk. Um, we have a few questions from uh, Mohamed Abdelkader. All right. So, thank you, Professor Shinkyu, for the wonderful presentation. I have four questions. The first one is, what kind of information does the smart vessel need to know about the non-smart ones in order to perform safe navigation? So I guess when it comes to the non-smart vessels, I hope it's a human operated vessels, I guess. So uh, I think that, that is a little bit out of context for the trajectory planning. But of course, if the autonomous vessel is really navigating in the canal, it has to use the, for instance, the stair camera or sensor, laser sensor data uh, to detect and you know, make a prediction of uh, how other vessels are navigating in, around. So I can imagine that can be turned into very nice robotics research. Um, so there is a lot of work going on in the human robot interaction context. So I am a robot, I see a human approaching. How can I estimate you know, trajectory of the human? And how can I design my control system in order to guarantee safety using those kind of predictions? So that, I guess that there's more interesting research you can do if you are interested in. Again, feel free to email me email. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. Actually, Mohammed has several questions. So his second question is, what techniques did you use to estimate the parameters of the connected vessel model? Um, so I believe we use the standard um, the package from MATLAB. So I believe there is something called a black box uh, package you can use to compute the, the parameter of the dynamical system using the data set. I guess so that's, that's uh, how that gives you an answer for that. And uh, his third question is what type of sensing you use to perform the required alignment for shape shifting? Uh, that's a very interesting question. So uh, we didn't use a particular sensor for the alignment itself. So if you remember the way this latching part was designed, it's a, like a really mechanical design. And one side is like a pointing out, the other side has a really large opening. And this pointing out part goes into the opening. And by the design of the, this mechanism, it you know guarantees alignment of the multiple uh, the two vessels when they are trying to do uh, latching. And only sensor we have used is the RFID. And RFID um, you know, determines how two vessels are connected. For instance, if they are connected to side to side, this RFID sensor will uh, recognize the connection.
So the last question from him is, there is a growing industrial interest in developing multi tag box systems for autonomous or highly autonomous docking for of large ships. Uh, would any of the methods you develop be suitable for such application? If not, what needs to be addressed? Would you need more than a single smart vessel? So uh, what's the question related to the building a tugboat? Tugboat, yes. Tugboat. So I guess a tugboat is kind of a you know, non-smart boat in my research. Um, that's a really interesting question because I was not really aware of the you know, things going on in the autonomous vessel or just, you know, surface vessel industry. Um, but uh, I think uh, from application side, I believe there is a lot of interest you can do with a, even with a autonomous surface vessels. So I guess the one idea would be building one um, smart boat with a full sensor package and the other one is more like a non-smart boat without the sensor package um, or even the like computation unit. So, uh, I think there there might be a you know interesting research question you can take a look at it but uh, at this point I cannot really answer your question I'm very sorry about that. Yeah, research is wide, right? We look research is answer. wide. Yes. Um, the other question is: Thank you, Professor. That's really a cool project. Do you use neural networks exclusively for machine vision analysis, and the rest is controls and optimization for the dynamical models? Additionally, how do you decide the way the modules latch into each other? Can it be scaled efficiently using the same techniques? So uh, when it comes to the computer vision part, I believe um, that is something I didn't do as a research product, but uh, some of my colleagues were looking at uh, the deep neural network method, uh, standard method in order to um, detect the uh, other vessels from the stereo vision camera. And, and I guess that the other question is the controls and uh, optimization for dynamic models. Yes, we use the uh, control theory uh, in order to build the control systems and some form of uh, optimization in order to solve the uh, trajectory planning problems, the both problems for um, shape shifting and uh, the canal navigation. Um, so when it comes to how to de decide the way the modules uh, latch each other, so I guess that that's more like a uh, how we determine the connections of the multiple vessels. I guess that that's more related to the application or need by uh, within, within the application side. Um, so I don't have any particular interesting story to share for now, but uh, I'm not sure you remember this, but the last experiment with the shape shifting, we kind of tried to see if we can move three vessels connected to side to side. So one is smart and the other one is the dumb like uh, not smart vessels and try to connect their, try to change their uh, configuration in a way that that is, you know, the, the uh, back and forth configuration actually is more suitable for the navigation purpose. So imagine we are starting from a warehouse where we have a boats and we change the shape into the one that's more suitable for the navigation. We go to the destination and we go back from side to side in order to serve the services uh, to the cities. Maybe that I hope that that would give you a, you know, just a brief answer to your question. So our last question is about the shape. Why the rectangular shape? Why, uh, what advantages does this shape has? Because I think that hexagonal is more mechanically stiffer. I see, that's a really interesting question. So uh, we didn't have a chance to look at uh, what's the mechanically uh, stiffer configuration, our system design. So our motivation started with, so we have a regular uh, boat and we want to you know, change as little as possible. So we can still call it um, the surface vessel. So I can imagine if it becomes like a hexagon shaped um, boat, then when it comes to like a canal navigation, maybe it's a higher dynamically inefficient. So I think that that was a kind of motivation to adopt a rectangular one, but I can easily imagine the, the other, um, using the other shape for building like a dynamic floating structure might be a more robust and stiff. Thank you for the question. <laughs>